Mr. Tarou, in this video, we're going to be introduced to the concept of related rates, and we're going to work through two examples that involve uh, circles and cones. And what we're really looking at here is a three-part uh, introduction to the idea of related rates. Uh, the link to the second and third video we're going to find in the description below as we make them. And, and uh, I'm updating lessons that I did years ago, so I'll put links to those videos as well. So related rates. Uh, you'll also find timestamps to the two examples that we are going to be doing in this uh, video. Well, since we're just being introduced to this idea, what is related rates? It's kind of something uh, similar to what you learned in pre-calculus, where maybe you had only a certain amount of fencing to enclose a rectangular area, maybe against a building or a river, and you had to figure out what was the dimension of the, uh, uh, that field, what would that dimension be that would maximize the amount of area uh, that you were enclosing with a fixed number of fencing. Those are all kind of um, foundational type problems to get you ready for, for a couple of sections in calculus. We are going to be talking about optimization in calculus, but in this lesson, things are going to be changing. And while things are moving through time, we're going to just take a little snapshot and maybe um, talk about how the radius of a circle is changing in relation to the area of a circle at some moment in time. So how do you do these related rate problems? Your guide for solving these is to read all the, uh, read the word problem and identify all of your given values that you need to find. And if it's in terms of geometry, make a sketch. Let, allow yourself to actually see what's going on. You know, uh, move some of the abstraction away from all of this algebra that we're doing. We're going to write an equation involving all the variables of interest. And remember that rates of change um, variables will not be seen or used until step three. So think about the geometry that's going on. Are you looking at a right triangle and therefore maybe uh, going to set up a Pythagorean theorem or um, like a sine of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent type situation. Are you talking about the volume of a cone or sphere where maybe you need to start with that kind of formula? Let the geometry, let the story tell you how to start um, the problem and then of course pay attention to what the question is asking for. Okay, this is all going to seem like really abstract and kind of vague until you start seeing an application here. Uh, use the chain rule to implicitly differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t. So we just learned about uh, taking derivatives using chain rule and implicit differentiation. Well that's all over this section. We're going to be taking a derivative now where you're going to be taking a derivative with respect to t because things are going to be changing over time. So you're going to have to think about the chain rule as you take the derivative of every single term that is in this equation that you set up based on the story and the question for the problem. And then we're going to substitute in known variables and um, of change and solve for you know, whatever the question is asking for. Well, those are the directions. Maybe I'm going to get out of the way. Maybe copy them down if you need to. We're going to get to the first example and second, of course, in this first of three video uh, series that I'm doing. And it kind of makes sense to what all these directions are actually trying to tell you. Na -na 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 -na. Na -na -na -na. So, for example, one, we have the story saying that the radius of a circle is increasing at a rate of five centimeters per minute. Find the rate of change of the area when r is equal to 23 centimeters. Hmm. Okay, I read the story. And part of our directions were to draw a picture. So I'm just going to pick an arbitrary radius and draw a circle. Make, and make it big enough that we can actually see it. So here we go. There is a circle. Okay. And I'm going to make the circle a little bigger, so let me get this out of the way. I'm going to make it bigger a couple of times. And as I go to the bottom of my problem here, talked about a circle. Great. Check. Blah, blah, blah. Find the rate of change of area. Okay, so... In Algebra 1, if you were told information about a couple of points and maybe you knew that the slope between those two points was a particular number and you had to find a part of one of those coordinates, 
you would set up the formula for slope. If I talked about a couple of points and maybe part of one of those points uh, coordinates is missing, maybe one of the points is missing a value of y, but I tell you that the distance between those two points is some value, you would set up the distance formula. That's kind of like how you start word problems uh, and understanding how to proceed through them in mathematics. You look for uh, kind of like a number, if you will, that is tied to a formula. So this question is about the area of a circle. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, um, we have an r value of 23. Well, we're not trying to find the area of a circle when the radius is 23. That's a static measurement. It's just, oh, here's a circle. Its radius happens to be 23. What's the area? That's something we've done in Algebra 1 and Geometry and Algebra 2. I mean, that's, that's a cool thing about calculus is up until now, you could only find static measurements. Well, now things are going to be uh, moving. Well, we do have the fact that this is going to be about area. We do know, we were given, that the radius is supposed to be uh, a moment in time. We're going to pick when the radius is equal to 33, uh, 23 excuse me, centimeters. The radius of a circle is increasing. The radius is increasing at some particular rate. Rate of change. Rate of change is something like a, a phrase that we would kind of use interchangeably in algebra with slope, the rate of change for a line. Um, what's the change in y per one unit of change in x? Rate of change is slope, and in uh, calculus, we just started learning how to find functions that give us slope. But, so what I need for you and my students is to realize that we are told that a radius is increasing that's why this is a positive value and not a negative value, at a rate of 5 centimeters per minute. So every time in a word problem in calculus you hear about a rate of change, you need to think about slope, aka you need to think about a function which gives you slope, you need to be thinking about derivative. So if the radius is changing at 5 centimeters per some unit of time, then you're looking at dr dt is equal to, well, 5 centimeters per minute. So we kind of basically know that dr dt is, is 5. That was given to us. We want to find the rate of change of the area. Find the rate of change, rate of change, slope, derivative of area with that same unit of um, time, which is minutes. So we be, we're being asked to find what dA over dt is. Now, we're going to do um, actually a couple of radiuses here. We're going we're to work with the 23 because that's actually how we're with the problem. But as I was starting to think about how I was going to present this to, present this to you all, um, we need to find the, the rate of change of the area, dA over dt, and we need to use some kind of notation to indicate that we understand that the rate of change for the area is not going to be constant. It is going to be uh, dependent on what the radius actually is. So we're going to find dA dt when the radius is equal to 23 centimeters, and that is the question. That's what we're going to solve or look for, try and figure out. Okay. So we identified that the question is about the area of a circle. We realized from the language of rates of change that we have to be working with some kind of derivative. And if you're just new to this concept and you're learning it basically from me over YouTube uh, for whatever reason or you didn't understand what your teacher covered or whatever, you just want to learn calculus because you find it interesting, you may do something like, well, the problem said we're going to work with the area of a circle and area is pi times the radius. Well, the specific radius that we're being asked to find is 23 squared. Work with that radius. Actually, not find the radius. We're given that. And be tempted to plug in the specific radius right off the bat. 
And I'm not even sure what 23 squared is because this really this is not what you want to do. But I want to point out if you take all the given information and plug it into the formula right off the bat, when you go to take the derivative of both sides, well, the derivative of a with respect to t is going to be, well, dA over dt. And on the right hand side, we need to realize that pi is a constant, 23 is a constant, and 23 squared is another constant. So the derivative of a constant well, is equal to zero. Yes, if I have the area of a circle and I plug in a specific radius and say this circle has a fixed radius of 23, well then the rate at which the area is changing is of course zero because the radius has been fixed at 23. So when you do related rate problems, you will at times be given numbers in the story that you plug into the formula right off the bat, but they have to be values that don't change throughout the entire story or, th or they don't change as time passes by. Well, we have a circle with a radius that is growing by five centimeters per minute. So if I pick some random length, even though we're going to pretend like it's five centimeters, if I make that radius a little bit larger, I'm going to have area, which is larger by whatever this value is. So as our one minute went by and we added what's supposed to be five centimeters, we've added this much area. If I do my best to try and sketch or add a little that same length once again, and we look at this area, I hope you can see that maybe if that's a five centimeter inc uh, increase in radius, I know five centimeters is a lot longer than that, um, and I add another five centimeters and create yet another radius, maybe this is a radius of uh, 10, 15, and 20, look how much certainly we can hopefully see that that blue area is more area has been added for that extra five centimeters uh, than we had here uh, in this yellow region. So the rate at which the area is increasing is going to be dependent on the initial length of that radius before you added the next five centimeters over the next minute. So now let's see what that looks like in terms of algebra. We have an area which is changing as we let the radius increase. We do have a radius being stated that it's increasing by five centimeters per minute. So we're going to bring the motion that is described in the problem by, again, thinking about rates of change or slope and slopes are derivatives. We need a derivative function. So we're going to take the derivative of both sides of our area formula again, but this time we're going to actually not do it you know, we're not going to plug in too much information early. Now remember, pi is a constant coefficient. Uh, I can let that pi sit out in front of our derivative notation, and we're taking the derivative with respect to t of both a and the derivative with respect to t of r squared. Now since our uh, variable with which we're taking a derivative uh, with respect to is not the same as our independent variable, or not the same as the variable that's inside the power of 2, we're going to have to remember to do that chain rule and we're going to on the right hand side first take the derivative of using the power rule and then we're going to finish up that chain rule. So ultimately, and I'll go back to white so it's easier to see, uh, on the left hand side we have dA over dt is equal to, now the 2 is going to come down, so we have 2 times pi, then we're going to reduce the power on the r by 1, so it's going to be 2 pi r. But then inside that power of 2, we have that r. We're going to finish that chain rule and multiply by the derivative of r with respect to time. Now we have a derivative for area. Area is changing. We have a derivative dr dt for the radius. The radius is changing. 
now that we have the derivatives in this formula allowing the size of the radius and the size of the area to change, now it's going to be safe to go ahead and plug in that specific R value of 23. So we have that dA over dt when the radius is specifically 23 centimeters. We're going to have that that's equal to 2 times pi times 23 for that specific radius times dr dt, which is going to be uh, what was given to us as being 5. We have 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 times 23, of course, is 230 um, pi square centimeters per minute. So when the radius is specifically 23 centimeters, the area is increasing by 230 pi square centimeters per minute. My notation here is identifying the fact that understand that d over dt, the rate at which the area is changing is not constant. This is an answer specific for when uh, the radius, one more time, is 23 centimeters. If you, uh, and your teacher may require you to write a sentence um, linking the answer to that specific time period. AP uh, is going to ask you to, to write that sentence. The area is changing by, or the area is increasing by 230 pi square centimeters per minute when the radius is equal to 23. If the radius was only 10, you would have 2 times 10 times 50. It would be a smaller number, right? So uh, the larger that radius gets, the faster the uh, area is going to be increasing as the radius continues to increase by 5 centimeters per minute. Okay, next example. Coming right up. So for example two, we have gravel is falling on two, a conical pile, uh, at a rate of 12 cubic feet per minute. The diameter of the base of the cone is approximately three times the height. At what rate is the height of the pile changing when the pile is 20 feet high? So we have the gravel is falling onto a conical pile. We're just like literally, you know, dumping sand or gravel or whatever it is that's the end of some kind, kind, of, kind of conveyor belt uh, at a rate of 12 cubic feet per minute. Well, a measurement per unit of time is a rate. We have the word rate showing up and we have cubic feet. So hopefully you're realizing that you're being told how fast the volume is changing. So we have, uh, we're being given here in the first sentence that dv over dt is changing at a constant uh, rate of, again, 12 cubic feet per minute. Okay, what else is being given? Uh, we have the diameter of the base of the cone is approximately three times the height. So the diameter of the base is equal to three times whatever the height is. Okay, good. At what rate, at what rate is the height changing? So again, rate of change is slope. Slope is, at least in calculus, right? We've learned how to find functions that tell us slope of another function at some moment in time. So we're being asked to find what dH over dt is when the pile is 20 feet. So when h is equal to 20 is what we're being asked to find. Okay, volume of a cone. The volume of a cone is equal to one-third pi r uh, squared times the height. 
Yeah, okay. So you're reading the problem, you haven't done these before, um, or maybe you're just starting your homework after your, your class's lesson, and you hear cone, you hear volume, you see this formula, you hear rates of change, you think derivatives, nice job. Derivatives give us slope, they give us rates of change, and you just look at this and you're like, okay, let's go. Let's find the derivative of this volume function. Let's take the derivative with respect to t of both the left and the right hand side. Take the derivative of v with respect to t. Uh, t. Do, um, let's go ahead and leave our pi over 3 out front, our constant coefficient, and take the derivative of r squared times the height. Now this is why my videos get long, because I'm trying to help you understand everything and, and maybe guide you through some missteps that you might uh, take that I commonly see in my class. Uh, the derivative of uh, v with respect to t is of course going to give us dv over dt, and then we have our pi over 3, and we're taking the derivative with respect to t of the function r squared times h. Oh, so we're taking a derivative of two functions being multiplied together. Well, that's product rule. And so we have the first, r squared, times the derivative of the second, the derivative of h with respect to t is dh over dt, and then plus first times the derivative of the second, plus the second, so h, times the derivative of the first. Now you're taking the derivative of something raised to a power of 2, and that base, or that thing, that's inside the power of 2, that r, is not the same as t. So finishing the chain rule, we, uh, and, and as we do the power rule, the 2 is going to come down, so h times 2, 2 times r, 2 times r to the first, because we're going to reduce that power of 2 down to a power of 1, but then we have to finish the chain rule, we have to think about that derivative of r with respect to t, and you're all like proud of yourself, you're like, okay, I remember the volume formula for a cone, I remembered my implicit differentiation correctly, I remember to apply the the, 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 the chain rule basically all the time, I've got the product rule, in case I misspoke there a little bit, and you go to start plugging in your numbers. Well, we're being asked to find how quickly the volume is changing. We were told, hmm, we were told the radius. I'm told how fast the volume is changing. And I'm told how tall, how tall the um, pile is. And I guess I could do, you know, like 3D is equal to 20. I could figure out what the radius is when the height of the cone is equal to 20 feet, indeed we're going to need to in a minute, but as we go through this entire uh, formula that we derived on our own by using implicit differentiation in the chain rule, we have here a dr dt. Uh, this, to find the rate of change for the volume, this formula is asking for how quickly the radius is changing. That's a problem because we weren't given the specific radius to go along with the 20, but we could figure that out. We are not, however, told how quickly the radius is changing, and there's, I don't know, maybe there's a way to figure it out, but I'm not going to figure, I'm, I'm not going to bother with it. It's, it, you're not, I don't think you actually can, maybe somebody can prove me wrong on the, on the YouTubes out there, but you're just making the problem way more complicated. We're, we, we've created a derivative that's asking for the rate of change for the radius over time, but we are given the rate of change um, for the volume, and the question is giving a specific height and asking how quickly the height is changing, not how quickly the radius is changing. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to recognize that things like that's going to happen as you do related rates. You might try something and it not work, and I also have not drawn a picture. So let's do that. We've got a cone. We've got a height of h, and that is compared to the diameter, not drawn to scale, and uh, we've got the fact, the stated fact, um, that the diameter is equal to three times the height. Well, 
where do you see diameter being asked for in this volume formula for a cone? So how about 2 times r is equal to 3h and do I want to solve this for r or do I want to solve this for h? Because we're going to we're going to use this information, which by the way, again, this is the volume formula for any cone. This is not the volume for a cone that has the specific shape or the characteristics that the diameter is equal to three times the height. So we want to kind of relate the shape of the cone to the volume of that cone. Just like in the previous section, we related the uh, rate at which the radius was changing to the rate at which the area was changing. So we're going to have to remember that we need to get rid of the r because we want to find the rate of change of h, not the rate of change of r. So r is going to be equal to 3 over 2 h. Now with that we can do a little substitution and get a formula for volume that is specific to this story where we have a, uh, the diameter that's 3 times the height. So v is equal to 1 third, or I'm going to say that pi over 3, times r, which is 3 halves h squared h. So that was just substitution. Let's try that again. So we're going to move this sideways here uh, just for space. We have 3 squared over uh, 2 squared. So 9 over 4 times 1 third. Well that's going to be what? 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we have 3 pi over 4 h squared times h is going to be h cubed and now we have again that volume with respect to now basically h you can write that but I just don't want to confuse you with a little bit of uh, maybe the notation it's just a little bit more complicated than it needs to be so volume is equal to 3 pi over 4 h cubed now we can go ahead and take the derivative uh, this time once again and we have the derivative on the left hand side is going to give us dv over dt. We're going to let that 3 pi over 4 sit out front, that constant coefficient, and take the derivative with respect to t of h cubed. And again, the variable that's inside the power of 3 is not the same variable uh, that we're taking the derivative with respect to. So again, that chain rule, and we have dv, we're going to have to stop and erase this board, dv dt is equal to 3 pi over 4, bring the power of 3 down on the h, so times 3h, reduce that power by 1, so 3h squared, and then finish that chain rule, that times dh over dt. So now I have a formula that's going to give us a rate of change for the volume uh, actually, it's going to give us a place to plug in that rate of change of volume, which is a constant rate of 12 cubic feet per minute. We have a place to plug in the specific height of the cone that we were asked to work with, which was 20, and we're going to solve for dh dt, the rate at which the height is changing when the cone is 20 feet high. dv dt is equal to 12 cubic feet per minute. Is That's equal to... 3 times 3 is 9, pi over 4. We have h given to us as 20 squared. And then we have that dh dt. So we have that d, I'm going to move this around. We have dh dt when h is equal to 20 is equal to, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 12 and multiply it by 4. So we have 12 times 4 over 9 times 20 squared um, pi. And when we get done simplifying it, again that's going to be for the height, uh, when the height is 20. Now before you go grab a calculator too quickly, uh, just to kind of like go through some reducing, of course 12 is 3 times 4, right? So we can let um, one of the 3's in 12 cancel with one of the 3's that are in 9. And we have 20 squared, which is what? That is 2 squared times 10 squared, and then times our pi here. Well, 
what? 2 squared is equal to 4, so that's going to let one of those cancel out. And 10 is, once again, 2 squared times 5 squared times pi. And 2 squared is 4, and that's going to cancel with that 4. So we've got um, an answer that we were able to arrive without the use of a calculator. dh dt, when h is equal to 20, is equal to, there's nothing left in the numerator but 1, over 3 times 5 squared is, uh, 5 squared is 25, and five, uh, 25 times 3 is 75 pi, uh, what was this, feet per minute. So when we are dumping 12 cubic feet um, per minute of gravel onto a pile, uh, it, with a situation where the diameter is three times the height, and when that cone is specifically 20 feet high, that height of the cone is only going to be changing or increasing by 1 over 75 pi feet per minute, and that is the end of our second example. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go to your homework.